This is an iPhone. It works fine right now, but would it work in space? A smartphone functions through electrical signals that don't get affected by gravity. Even the contents of a smartphone do not get affected in zero gravity for a long time. But would they survive the harsh environment of space? To give these machines a chance, let's conduct a thought experiment at 350 kilometers, the distance of International Space Station from Earth. With the arrival of the mobile phone in 1980s, instantaneous communication was no longer restricted to stationary places. But the really clever invention wasn't the phone itself, which is basically a radio transmitting device, but the cellular network that supports it. As you talk, your phone converts your voice into an electrical signal, which is transmitted via radio waves and converted back to sound by a friend's phone. Contrary to popular belief, a local mobile phone communication does not use satellite. So to begin with, a smartphone in space will not be able to make or receive calls because it communicates to a base station that is located on Earth. Each mobile has a mobile identification number which is nothing but your 10 digit phone number. When you dial, your mobile sends a request to the mobile switching center which in turn forwards your and the receiver's mobile identification number to all the base stations. The base stations transmit this number and all the mobiles within the coverage area of any base station receive this number and match it with their own. If the number matches with a particular mobile, then that mobile sends an acknowledgement to the base station. The base station then informs the mobile switching center that the mobile is within its coverage area. The mobile switching center then instructs the base station to access an unused frequency pair. After this, the base station instructs your mobile to use the unused frequency pair for your conversation. It also instructs your mobile to ring. All this happens within 2 to 3 seconds when you make a call. The region over which the signal strength of a base station lies is known as coverage area which would obviously not extend to 350 kilometers above the earth. In order to remain portable, mobile phones need to have small antennas and use very small amount of power. But then, how do astronauts converse in space? While wearing the current spacesuits, astronauts wear a Snoopy cap. Yes, that is an official word. A hat fitted with microphones in the ear area for listening and boom microphones in front of the mouth for speaking. Astronauts transfer the sound waves from their voices into radio waves and transmit them to other astronauts in space or to the ground via space shuttles. They work on the same principle as your mobile phone, but they are much more powerful transmitters. The big challenge smartphones face in space are the extreme temperatures. In a temperature test of 15 of the most popular smartphones, all of them had shut down by minus 35 degrees Celsius. Apple's website limits the non-working temperature of an iPhone to be 45 degrees Celsius to minus 20 degrees Celsius. However, at high Earth orbit, temperature can range from 120 to minus 157 degrees Celsius. At these high temperatures, the smartphone's battery would explode and this would render the smartphone useless. Also, cosmic rays can wreak havoc on electronic integrated circuits by the effect of electromagnetic induction. In practicality, smartphones in space have already been put to test. Britain's Surrey satellite technology launched the Nexus 1 into space by a rocket from India on 25th February 2013 as a part of nano satellite called Strand 1. The 4.3 kg machine holds the distinction of being the world's first smartphone satellite. The satellite contains precautions to protect the phone. The onboard computer on Strand 1 would trigger a processor intensive work which would heat up the battery and warm up the phone. Due to these precautions, the satellite is able to make use of specially designed apps in order to pick up scientific data. The researchers will also make use of the 5 megapixel camera in order to shoot images of the Earth and Moon. As for cosmic rays, failure rates are reduced by as much as 80% when the phone is turned off. The Strand 1 test was conducted to see that if smartphones could function at that capacity because in many cases they have CPUs faster and more memory than a conventional satellite computer. This makes them an appealing and a cheaper alternative because they are mass produced. Inside the International Space Station or a shuttle where it's not subject to the harshness of space, it would have no problem. In fact, astronauts have been known to take their phones with them. So it turns out, these smartphones are not very different from the guys who made them. While facing an extreme challenge, odds may suggest that we don't stand a chance. But with a little help from our creators, we just might make it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.